This next-gen demo is presented by State Farm. Next-gen, PS4, it's that Killzone game. You know, the, the, the kids have all been talking about. I have to be joined by Herman Holtz. Do, I, do, 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 do that right? Great job. Yeah, okay, good. Could not be better. You are the director over at Guerrilla Games. Thank you so much for your time. Um, so, you are a launch title for the PlayStation 4. That's right. It is a signature franchise that usually is known for pushing the technical, at least the visual boundaries of what, yeah. uh, of, of what uh, the system can do. Any pressure? You know, hardly. As I say, it's been a, it's a breeze developing a launch game. Yeah. No, really. I mean, it's, it's, we're doing the, uh, the graphics thing with the fresh new look and the HD and what people, um, people expect from it. But I guess more importantly for the C3 is the gameplay side of it and all the innovations that come with that just as important. But yeah, pressure. Lots of it. Yeah, I can, well, then also, you guys went through a lot with Killzone 2, where there's so much skepticism that would actually look like that. I mean, yeah. you've been down this road before. <laughs> I have, and that's why at the, the 220 event, we had live gameplay, right? No trailers, nothing. No. On stage, seven minutes of live gameplay. And you did the same thing in, fe in February. Of, that's of, what of, I was talking about. Oh, you were yeah. talking about that. Yeah. I was thinking about years ago with, with Killzone 2. Yeah. But with, with no more ado, let's take a look at the game. What is the Killzone setting? I mean, it doesn't have a number after the title. Yeah. So how does it sort of fit into the, in, yeah, it's, it's, into the fiction? This is 30 years on from the end of Killzone 3. And um, we're now on the futuristic planet of Vector. And the new thing is that uh, it's kind of a, a Cold War setting now. Cold War inspired setting, I should say, with the Vectans and the Hellgas living side by side. They're divided by a vast wall that encircles the entire planet. But because of that close proximity, you get a different uh, different kind of conflict, different kind of gameplay through. You get uh, deniable operations across the wall, for instance. And this level here that you see, um, we play as a Shadow Marshal. Uh, the enemies didn't know he was there, of course, until he killed the guy. And um, he is, uh, you're, so you're Shadow Marshal and you are, um, uh, you're retrieving some intelligence that uh, a crew that got downed on their intruder lost. Uh, that's your objective here. Now, I, I, I was noticing earlier that there was kind of almost like a, like a sonar thing that he was, he was sending out yeah, on the ground. Is, I mean, it sounds like that there might be more, more tactical elements. Yeah, lots more, game. lots more. This, uh, that's the tactical echo. You can spot where your enemies are behind cover. But you have this, uh, this, this flying companion, the drone, the tech drone. We call it the owl. It's got lots of, uh, lots of abilities. You can zip line free form through the level, makes it very swift, very quick. Uh, right now here, as you see, is the, uh, the attack mode. So you can really use it to either kill enemies or draw fire from, so you can flank them. Sorry, I was, I was distracted by the sun coming in through the trees. Yeah. You're just doing that to show off. <laughs> Completely, yeah. And it's, you know, it's, uh, we want you to feel close to this world. This is your home world that's under threat. So we made it, we, we added a lot of beauty to it. Right, obviously the, the color palette, which had been a criticism that had been le leveled at you guys, you know, with the other Killzone games, you seem to be addressing that with, with a, a, a vast variety of, of colors. I mean, was, was it, is it nice to be able to not have such an industrialized setting that is so war-based? I mean, is, is, is that something that you can help affect the gameplay? Um, you know, we have a wide variety of settings. It's not so much that we're not doing the, the look of Killzone 2 and 3, oh. per se. Uh, you saw some of these kind of uh, these, these color palette environments in Kills on One, uh, so we always like to look back at the franchise and then take inspiration from that. Uh, but there will be some, uh, you know, some pretty Kills on Two, Three like environments also. But I love the fact that you're now fighting in a forest. It's great to have that. Yeah, also. I mean that, that's For not variety, the first thing right? that people think of when when, when, when they think of the, the Kills on Franchise. Shooting Hellgas in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> so. Obviously, the game is gorgeous. Uh, you can see that's rendering very large areas. How is the game also using stuff that's in the PlayStation 4? I mean, is it using anything with the cloud and, and, and some of the other new bells and whistles that, that are going to come with the console? Um, so we're basically everything that's available at launch, we're, uh, we're going to make use of PlayGo is a big one, right? Mm -hmm. you, you download a level, you start playing. So we'll support that. Remote play, uh, you can play it on the Vita, we'll do that. Everything in the controller, so the owl that we are just talking about here, the, the drone, you can control it on the touchpad, on your uh, DualShock 4. Uh, we've got the nice outward face triggers that we're using uh, for fire, uh, well, everything. The speaker is uh, for radio messages, everything that's there we'll use. Um, I, I was just, uh, so if, if, if this plays on the Vita, I mean, how, what, what, I mean, look, this is, this is a remarkably good looking game. I'm even have, I'm having a hard time. Is that, is it just streaming from your PlayStation 4 and that's how you're able to maintain exactly. the look of it? Exactly, and you'll control it on the Vita. 
that, that's exactly it. So we're still working out final controls when that translate right from the DualShock 4 back to the Vita controls. Um, so I, I also want to chat with you. Uh, we, we, we just had the gentleman from uh, Machine Games who are making Wolfenstein on. And I was asking him kind of, you know, there's a lot of questions there. Where can we go with the shooter? I'm, I'm not saying that people are correct in thinking that somehow yeah. there's too many of them and there's nothing that's innovating with them. But as someone who has really worked in this franchise, or, yeah. or in this genre, excuse me, for so long, what do you, like, where are your ambitions maybe with this game or, or further down the line that you want to go with the first person shooter? Well, what we did with this uh, with this game is uh, you know, the comparison of skills on two and three, I think we're kind of roller coasters. That was also quite popular. But this is more like an amusement park. You get to pick your rides. So it's a lot more free form and the scale is much wider, maps are much bigger. What you see in here, the mission objectives, you can pick any order to play them and they actually do affect the, the gameplay. So you switch off the alarm in the comms tower, your enemies can no longer call on reinforcements. Uh, so it's kind of your your own style of gameplay. We're not so much looking at the, the, the general trends, we're kind of looking at what we're doing rather than what the competition's doing. Um, and then I'm, I'm looking right I'm, I'm assuming this is just a beauty shot. This is you just making a this point about what you're doing with your lighting. Right? <laughs> Take a photo, send with, it with home. With your lighting engine. I'm on. If, if you don't mind just giving some context to our viewers as to what is so unique, remarkable with what you're pulling off with the lighting and it going through the trees right there. Step one, hire amazing artists. <laughs> Step two, make sure you got a great engine. Uh, I mean, it's um, it, it is just a, a lot of detailed work. Uh, the uh, yeah, I'm not really the one to speak on the on the engine part specifically, mm. but uh, yeah, we we did want to have a lot of these kind of shots to uh, to have nature, create an environment that you care about rather than feel that's destroyed and you want to leave it. And um, and so you're you're now on the on the Hellgast side, so you're behind enemy lines right now. That's why you see a lot of these enemies here that aren't reacting initially. They don't know you're there. It's, uh, pretty water. You like the water? Yeah, I, 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 I am getting water, lost right? in these visuals <laughs> right now. I'm like, you stop asking questions. You're like, yeah, oh, the water. Hey, hey, you, 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 you got me kind of impressed. Um, so, it, wh where do you also? How do you describe sort of kill zone? You've never really made it clear that there are good guys and bad guys. You're, you're fighting for one side. It always has been somewhat ambivalent. Is, yeah. is, is, is that still present in Shadowfall? And, and, and am I reading that correctly? Like, what, what has always been sort of the story or the subtext you're trying to convey with, with no, the Hellgast franchise? No, so you're, you're spot on. There's a, there's shades of gray. The uh, the Hellgast, uh, they were attacked. It was a counterattack, but still their whole planet was blown up. They're now given sanctuary, so they live on the home planet of the Vectans. They are the bad guys, but they're really just surviving, whereas the Vectans are protecting their way of life, really. So they each have strong motives to fight the fight that they're fighting. And um, so, uh, you know, it's not good and bad. It's not that simple. And obviously, Killzone 3 ended in, first it was genocide. <laughs> that was kind of, I mean, like the entire planet was pretty much yep. sort of wiped off the face of the earth. How do you sort of build that into, is, I guess, is, is there any sense of regret <laughs> 30 years past in the world of, of Shadowfall? Well, there is, right? The, uh, that's exactly why the, uh, the Helgen, they, they now live in this planet. They, uh, the Vectans, they had to give in to them living on the other side of the wall. Uh, not that they much like it, right? You have your arch rival, your historic foe living in that close proximity. Um, but yeah, that is uh, in a way redemption for the Helgast having this, this home turf. But then again, it's not their home. Um, Guerrilla Games, it's, it's based in Amsterdam. Correct. Yeah, um, I was just curious. It, it is a unique story. It's not what you typically get, especially out of American shooters, which tend to sort of go for just straight up heroism. Uh, yeah. I mean, is, is European history, and obviously Holland was caught right up in the middle of World War II, is, yeah. is, is that some of the stuff that does inform the, the philosophies that are inside of Killzone? It, it, it might be. I mean, we have developers from, uh, I believe, 40 different nationalities. Uh, they each take their own background. It might be that, uh, you know, things are not as black and white. They're not cowboys and Indians, right? No, no. Uh, with, with cowboys and Indians in mind, uh, I assume multiplayer will be returning with Killzone? Uh, that is a correct assumption, Adam. Good. And that's good, because when you pause there for a second, I'm like, oh, we may have to talk with the camera off. Yeah. No, multiplayer is the other half of the game. It's going to be super ambitious. Uh, I don't have any details on that quite yet, but they'll be to come soon. All right, well, I look forward to hearing about that. Thank you so yeah. much. Obviously, it's launching with the PlayStation 4 exactly. once that date has been determined. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me.